from for two, 2001 to 2005, we met people to all the circles and Catholics and charismatic Cath uh, Catholics, of which there are 100, over 100 million in the world today. And that's not bad. During those three years in Israel, step by step, my view of uh, the Catholic Church changed. It underwent a change. And I had realized I'd never earlier really met Catholics. I had not had any fellowship uh, with them. I'd not conversed with them. I lived in another world. Now, I don't know if you and I lived in the same world. However, I had a whole, in, whole uh, lot of inherited views about them. I'd read, read one or two obscure books which criticized them uh, strongly, but I'd not read their own writings or listened to how they themselves explained their faith. I was too far from them for that. With, in other words, I was as many here in the Protestant North, qu quite um, uh, un without knowledge and really rather with my preconceived ideas. I'd, uh, I'd heard second-hand about them and got, you know, got little snippets of negative judgments often built upon fears. And F fears, my brothers and sisters, are the the gigantic mountains that stand in the way, f stopping us seeing the open, beautiful landscape the Lord wants to show us. Our fears and our prejudices must always be overcome. In Israel, you've this happened and I received this word from the Lord not the Lord said don't call anything dead uh, several times I've told you how we went in the Geminite uh, Valley in in Kerem in Jerusalem how I heard I told you how the Lord pointed at uh, an old olive tree and he looked at it and he said isn't that he kind of pointed at it that's dead isn't it and I just cast a bit of a lazy eye upon it and said yes it is I agreed and then suddenly he said, what? Look closer. I discovered that on that ancient olive tree, which I just, just cast a glance at it, and thinking it was dead, I discovered tiny little green buds and all those little branches uh, and right down the, 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 the trunk. The, 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 it looked rotten. It was actually hollow, it looked dead. But then, plainly in my heart, I will, I, something happened so that I will never forget it, never call anything dead ever again. He said it very plainly, and it talked about my attitude to the traditional, traditional churches. And there and then, I asked the Lord for forgiveness that I'd ca called some of them dead. I was ashamed. And since then, I have been very careful not to call other traditions for dead. It was a, sh uh, a shocking uh, experience for me and became the start for a closer fellowship and meeting uh, with these other churches and not least our loving Catholic brethren around the world. This has taught me so very much indeed. And I also think that Begit and I have um, felt and noticed that these experiences they've had, and, and our, amongst our own words, we've had the grace from God uh, that we've, uh, pre we've shared this with people who've understood it and appreciated it and actually received this news. So what then was, how has, what did we discover step by step? Let me give you this in the space of a few minutes. As I mentioned earlier, we discovered that our attitudes to the, uh, uh, the Catholic Church have uh, been uh, marked by a lack of knowledge, ignorance, and our negative preconceived ideas mixed with some fears. There I've had to repent and turn. Also, 
we've seen that uh, it, talking of genuine uh, unity, you have to go where the, your fears hold you back in, th in truth and in love when all members of the body of Christ need each other. It's not that others need us at Leave It's All, well, but that is true, but we also need the others. We are in need of them, and it's often our own pride and our deep, uh, deeply entrenched fears that stop us from seeing them or reaching out to our brothers and sisters. We, who are members in the body of Christ, we have never received a command of God to attack each other. Our various uh, commandments from God or uh, we've been busy with and therefore we haven't understood one another. Genuine unity actually does include differences. It isn't on a momentary sense or emotion not built there. It does not also minimize theological differences. Uh, but but it means you have to uh, maintain an open heart in attempting to understand the others and even uh, listening to their points of view and not being too self-assured that you know it all yourself. So when you get used to these brothers and sisters, you focus on the central themes, that is, on Jesus and the cross, not the peripheral issues which seem to separate us, but first and foremost, that which we have in common. And we discovered, Begitta and I, more and more, that that we have very much in common with the Catholic Church. There is so much more that unites than divides us. Uh, genuine uh, unity does, is not the same as a uh, mishy, uh, wishy washy uh, uh, ecumenicalism uh, uh, or uh, some kind of administrative tools to get everything together under one hat. No, genuine unity is really a work of the Holy Spirit. It's He who draws us together, and that, and that comes out the depth of our Lord Jesus Christ's heart, and it was He who died not only for the people, but also to to unite for and gather together the spread the, the children of God who are spread abroad. We have uh, continued to discover and appreciate these things and to approach them uh, in more and more ways. The, a, a deep longing then began to arise within us to unite. Uh, it's like watching the look at those lovely cream buns outside the shop window, but not actually uh, go in and get that uh, that cream bun. So what have we seen? Certain important things. What have we seen? We've seen how real and genuine the the love of Jesus is in these Catholic members, and how living the. Uh, the living their truth and faith is in Jesus. We do not have a monopoly on personal faith, and it's important to see that personal faith can uh, be expressed in many ways. Also, how biblically um, uh, uh, anchored the, by the Catholic Church is in its classical doctrines. And... Uh, uh, the, and they're everywhere in their writings, they, they refer to the scriptures, and in their services, we, they use the scriptures more than we do. The biblical faith uh, uh, it, it expects the Lord to intervene in our world today, not only in our own lives. They actually believe in the virgin birth, Jesus' uh, divinity, that he went about doing good of his real and genuine physical resurrection from the dead, and much such like, which our modern theology nearly denies today. 
Another thing we've seen is the ethical and uh, moral ground on which they stand, and they, and they stand against the, uh, the world's uh, secular agenda. Uh, w one of these is the view of uh, abortion, um, marriage between one man and one woman, and, another, and that is the deep uh, involvement they have among the poor. So this has been a journey of discovery where we've recognized ourselves time and time again. Well, this is what we believe too. Also, their view of uh, wonders and signs where we have much in common. That is a strong belief in the supernatural and God's supernatural interventions. The, the historical Protestant churches today, often with much liberal theology, often either avoid or denounce. And I realize that today more and more there's power in the gospel, but not only the truth in these things. They go back to the Acts of the Apostles, which is what we normally refer to, but the order and the structure even goes back to those times. So we don't always have to reinvent the wheel is every century. But nevertheless, faith must be made uh, personal in every generation and our spiritual life must be renewed. So the Ch Catholic Church has also had many powerful renewal movements down the years. Step by step then, we've seen that we do not need to contest with the Catholic Church. Uh, we, uh, Catholic, we, we charismatics often do a bit of uh, fighting. God himself came in a form, and when the word, um, word became flesh, uh, we, f we, we found that he was born by his uh, body, in his body. Now there are certain forms given by God to us for our help, and this is for our church and the, in which we may grow. And we can be l upheld by these, not being bound by these. And then I saw how life-giving the sacramental life is. I'm not going to... Uh, uh, list all these now for we're heading to the end of the time of my message but let me tell you the steps it's taken us 10 years to see all these things it's important to Im impossible to gather all this together in one thing basically we can say that in the church the Catholic Church we found a continuity that goes right back to the Apostles and Jesus himself with a strength and a stability which the, the gates of hell have not prevailed against. We believe this power and these roots are necessary for the future. And we're talking about the survival of the Christian world in a cruel future world. And um, we, we believe that God wants to um, unite us as one. So finally, Begitta and I saw that there is a reason why we've begun to discover all these things. It wasn't that we should be a little bit more generally educated on ecumenism, but God's Spirit was actually drawing us and urging us to join in earnest with the Catholic Church. We saw plainly that it was Him leading our steps and as you can understand this meant a uh, uh, an inner uh, conflict in my mind uh, not least uh, in a doctrine doctrinally uh, but I thought about you and us our church uh, we have considered and reflected and contemplated uh, all the things we did together uh, in our uh, loving and uh, re relationship, so my, the brakes were on. But while I had them on, I began to discover how it's, it was burning under my feet. <laughs> um, we've had words from God, 
But here I must uh, confess my own um, un reluctance and unreadiness to take this final step, which I am talking to you today about today. Two, uh, two in the morning, I awoke. Uh, there were very clear thoughts. I have sensed that the Lord was reminding me, saying, "There are two ways to let."